Troy, you've just finished producing a book with us, The Secrets of the Savvy Consumer. And it's, <laughs> I'll say it's chock full of, <laughs> of secrets, of money saving secrets. But when I asked you before, when we were just chatting, I said, Are you, do you consider yourself a consumer advocate? But no, you told me that you're a journalist at heart. So tell me about your background and how you got into this, this world. Well, my background, ha I've always been a writer. And it, it, because I love to research and I love to write, I love to learn, and I've been that way all my life. Uh, I went to college for journalism, uh, undergraduate and graduate for journalism, and I worked at first for Gannett newspapers and then went on to the Associated Press as a correspondent, and I covered national politics and other blood sports. <laughs> uh, I got over that. Uh, but moved on into magazines and but for the last 25 years or so I've been writing books and each time I write a book it is a joy to me because I am being paid to learn and I I, I embrace that uh, the other part of it is and this is where it connects up with consumer issues and, and being a, a savvy consumer is that I have become convinced over time that those of us who know how to get the best deal on things are being subsidized by all of the others who don't. And that's the vast majority of people mm -hmm. who don't. So let's say there's 10% of us who, know, who go through life knowing how to get the best deal. We're being subsidized by the other 90%. That sounds so cruel. It's, well, it's... Unfair. It's, and, I and I hate the word fair and unfair, but... It is it what it is, and maybe this book will increase that 10%. Let's yeah. hope we sell many, many, many copies of it so that we can increase that, the numbers of people who, who are savvy consumers. And on the flip side, though, is the point that you make that there's all this money that's out there available. Absolutely. And it's not like to get a good price is stealing it. It's that there's money there, and you're just leaving money on the table if you don't ask the questions to get that best price. Right. Now, Every retailer who is going to make a, su a success of what they're doing understands that when a push comes to shove, it's better to make less profit than no profit. So they, you may have a list price on something, but if they really think that the, they're not going to get a sale from you, there are so many ways to reduce that price. And you do it politely, do it respectfully. But I guess my goal, and, and, and I think my wife and I have had success at this, is to live beyond our means. And I'm not talking about going into debt, but if, 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 if I have this much money coming in, the same as you coming in per month, I want to live a little bit better or a lot better than you do if you don't know the tricks. I'm sure you do know many, many tricks. Because you teach them to us. Well, and, and, right. and this is your business. Right. But my goal is to live beyond my means, and, and, and we, 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 okay. we're dedicated to that, my but wife and I. But the thing that I also loved about what you'd said to me is that your journalistic background has you wanting to be sure that you have right information oh, and that you do the right research, that it's not, again, not scamming, not stealing, not, you know, that you do proper research. And at the root of all of it, you're regularly saying, do the research. What's the the What's mm. the solution that you want? What's the what's the answer that you want? And then that drives the questions to ask. Well, show me the numbers. Prove right. it to me. When I worked for the Associated Press, we had a saying. Someone would come walking into the into the bureau and say, "Did you see that sunrise this morning?" And the proper response was, "Says who?" And give me three attributions and a photo. Oh. Uh, but right. uh, but that's the yes. way I go through life, yes. and and I, uh, it's a joy to do it for me. Mm -hmm. But it's you know, you tell me something, I say politely, what are your sources? Prove it to me, and let's go out and party on the money we save. Right. And which is what's so great about the suggestions that you have, because I know they've been researched. We know that they're right. Mm. Now you and I asked you a question earlier, whether and when we were just before we were we were talking on whether or not it's easier or harder today for consumers. And you think that it's much easier for consumers. Well, I think that having information 
is a wonderful thing. You and I were talking earlier, and I challenged you. I said, do you think that consumers have it easier or harder now? Um, and you kind of went, you think e consumers have it much better now, thanks to all the information that's available. Well, because it goes back right. to the concept of before we had this information age that we lived in, you would walk into a store and you'd say, how much? Okay. Now, if you are a savvy consumer, you are able to go to a store or go online or make a phone call, however you buy, and you have all of this information so that you already know what is a reasonable price for something. You already know its features. You know its likelihood to be reliable. You know the comparable products to it. And many of the websites that you may shop at w uh, have realized this. They'll show you people who have bought this product have also looked at this product, or people have considered have bought this product instead. Information is a wonderful thing, assuming, as we just talked about, that it is real and that it is backed up by proper research. And, and you can find in, in almost anywhere you look real information. And that's a wonderful thing. It's true. The one thing I would challenge you on mm. is that I think the environment is more hostile for consumers now that there used to be more of a service focused environment and that I feel like you have to, like just for your own protection you have to do all that research because the service oriented stores and companies are not they talk about it but it really is a every man for himself well I, I don't disagree with you on that and this, this is something mm -hmm. that uh, that we've kind of done to ourselves where we have all said, I, I want to pay the absolute least for a product, which is not the same as saying I want to get the best price for a product. Mm -hmm. we, that's the reason why we have ships coming through the Panama Canal carrying boatloads of, of, of high definition television sets and, and, and smartphones and such coming from China. Why is that? It was because we've said, we've said we'd want to pay the absolute least. Uh, this is not really the subject of the book and it's not something that we're going to solve right here, but that is different from saying I want to get the best price for what I want to buy. But yes, we have damaged what some people call the brick and mortar stores, the, the, either the, the, the mom and pop stores or the local stores because they have severe competition, but there still are good shops, there still are good places. No question. There are good places to be had. But I think the important part, and that's why we, we did this book, that's why we're so glad to have you as part of our bottom line family of experts, mm -hmm. that you have to be smart about it and that you have to do your research and, and do all that you can with advice, with expert guidance to get the best prices and to not be part of the 90% that's subsidizing. You buy right. and you're not sold. Exactly. All right, well, thank you so much, Corey. Thank you. If you liked what you just saw, we have more with Corey Sandler at BottomLineInc.com. So go there, check out all the videos with Corey, and do me a favor, share it on social. We love that.